Hello everyone, it's me Zoe Hill. So I'm just going to do a quick uh, video for you today about survival tips for fibromyalgia. So we all know we live with a lot of pain every day. So I just want to go through a few little things that might help you survive your daily fibromyalgia. So the first thing I would recommend is taking a hot bath or shower if you don't have a bath. Um, we all know that heat helps reduce the pain. Um, if you don't have a bath, um, use a shower, obviously. The warmer you can get it, the better. Um, Epsom salts are also fantastic. Now, you can get those in a shower gel as well. Um, the, the longer you can spend in a bath, the better for you, because it also gives you you time, which we know we don't get a lot of, especially if we have a family. Okay, so bath is very important for you as well as your muscles. Um, exercise. Now, this is a touchy sort of subject because we're already in pain. The last thing we want to do is exercise. I know this. I suffer a great deal with fibromyalgia and in pain constantly. We all know if we have fibromyalgia, it's not the only thing we suffer with. It's um, we get RLS, IBS. RLS is um, with your legs. IBS is with your bowels. We get headaches. There's over 200 symptoms we generally get. Maybe not all of us get the same symptoms. We might not get all 200. We might, might only get a few of those symptoms. But my point is, we don't always feel like exercising. But if you do a little bit every day, um, whether it just be swimming, walking, some people might like to do Tai Chi. Some people like to do a little bit of yoga. Just anything, anything that you can do, do it because the more you keep your muscles moving the better um my mum used to say if you don't use it you lose it and i think that that is slightly true um i could go into a million different stories but i'm not going to i'm gonna keep it short and sweet <laughs> you know what i'm like for chatting <laughs> um so i think exercise is really important but gentle exercise don't do anything that you're not unsure if you're unsure of it don't do it um, don't ever push yourself. Just do little and often. Um, cleaning. Now, we all know we all struggle with cleaning, but if you do little bits of cleaning, just maybe 30 minutes of it or 10 minutes, just clean a room at a time. That's what I do. I start with my living room, just do a little bit. And once it's clean, I then take a break nice little coffee <laughs> and then if I'm feeling up to it I'll go and do the kitchen or do the kitchen a different day a room a day even but if you have a nice clean room it really does make a difference and smelling fresh um the achievement as well that you've done something it really does make a difference for your mental health if you're working before you get fibromyalgia, I think we all set goals. It's just a natural thing to do. So, you know, I wanted to be a dog walker, a dog handler, sorry, in the army when I was growing up. Uh, it soon became apparent that I wasn't going to be getting up at 5 a.m. in the morning to go um, train dogs. Um, I then changed my career path <laughs> pretty, pretty sharp. <laughs> um, I became a dental nurse. I wanted to then become a hygienist, but unfortunately I became ill with fibromyalgia. If you're still working, don't set your goals so high um, because sometimes they're not achievable because, <clears throat> excuse me, <laughs> because we, we are poorly. We didn't ask to be, but we are. And sometimes if we set our goals too high, although it is good to have goals, I'm not saying don't set goals for yourself, set achievable goals now that you're poorly just think about your health um laughter now i love to laugh and i think it's very very important for you to laugh every day um just for your mental health so go on a website that that do jokes um go on a group that that do jokes every day tell a joke make your children say jokes, anything, just to have a laugh. Um, laughter is the best medicine. I totally, wholeheartedly believe that. So laugh every day, please. 
that if you take anything away from that from this today take that um turmeric now turmeric is doctor recommended um it's an anti-inflammatory that is scientifically proven so the more you use turmeric the better okay for your body um sleep now that's a cringy thing to say because lots of us suffer with insomnia um, and we can't sleep so for me to say to you sleep you're thinking huh, i wish now the other side is a lot of us suffer with chronic fatigue so we sleep too much now there are things you can do and i'll do another video at some point to help you sleep but if you can sleep then sleep as much as you can because your body will tell you when it wants to sleep whether that's through the day through the night if your body is telling you to sleep then do it it may not always be convenient because if you've got children you need to do school runs um you're cleaning the house you might have people coming over you might have made arrangements um it, Friends and family will understand, hopefully, if you have um, family and friends that understand. Not, not everyone does. Um, but if you have made arrangements to, to meet somebody, but you, you need to sleep, I would say sleep. That's totally up to you. But the best thing for your body is to rest. We've covered yoga. Um, if you can get into a class to help you do yoga, let the instructor know you've got fibromyalgia. They should look after you and help you with specific um, yoga techniques um, specific for, yo uh, for fibromyalgia. Some places do specific yoga classes for fibromyalgia sufferers or CFS suf sufferers. If you can find those or book into those, that would seriously help you. Electric blankets. Now, heat... Um, it's fantastic. Heat is comforting, it's soothing, um, and weighted blankets also. <clears throat> weighted blankets um, feels like a hug, um, and they, they're fantastic for, our, for, for your legs, RLS. Um, so if you can get a weighted blanket, some people don't like them, but the majority of people do. So if, if you can get a weighted blanket, do it, and heated blankets also. Um, don't ever be afraid to have a Netflix day or a TV binging day. Um, we need to rest. It's one of those things our body needs. Fibromyalgia sufferers will tell you that that is something that we do need to do. Um, don't ever compare yourself to normal people. We're, we're poorly people, you know, if you go out with people, um, with, with regular people and, and they want to do this and that and you just can't, then don't, don't ever push yourself because you will then go into a flare and you will be poorly and it's just not worth it. Uh, try not to compare yourself to other fibromyalgia sufferers either, because like I said earlier, there are over 200, Ill, um, symptoms and you may not have all 200 um you might not every fibromyalgia sufferer suffers the same way as somebody else so um don't ever compare yourself medication now there are there is a big thing about medication at the moment because some doctors are going through this thing about not wanting to give medication to fibromyalgia sufferers I don't know why, because it does help some people. Um, I guess with that, uh, I mean, it's very much up in the air. You know, some people agree that it helps. Some people says it doesn't. Um, I guess you have to just try it for yourself and see whether it does help you. Um, the brain doesn't, try, doesn't, it mixes up our signals to our nervous system so whether you believe that medication will help that or not i don't know 
Um, all I can tell you is from my own experience and medication has helped me. Um, so if you're in pain and you're struggling to live a, a good quality of life at the moment, um, it would be my recommendation that you try everything. Try um, massage, try physiotherapy, try, because a lot of fibromyalgia patients say that trauma has brought on their symptoms. It did in my case. Um, talking about that trauma may help. Um, it didn't in my case. Um, fibromyalgia is very up in the air. There hasn't been a lot of research about it, unfortunately. Um, especially now with COVID. At the, while filming this, we're in the middle of COVID. Um, so a lot of the research has gone on to that. Um, so unfortunately uh, for us, um, you know, uh, a bit awkward, but things are being researched into COVID at the moment and long COVID. So, um, you know, our sort of research has been put on hold. A lot, a lot of the things have. Um, I'm getting a little bit off, off subject. <laughs> but my point is, is that you have to think about you and what works for you. Don't listen to other people. Um, you know, other people will tell you what, what works for them. So that might not work for you. If you think the medication helps you, then carry on with your medication. If your doctor wants to take it away, maybe you can try it with no medication. If it doesn't work, then go back on it. Everything is all about you, not what other people think. Um, you know, I can tell you what I think, but that doesn't matter. It's all about what happens and what's best for you. Medication is a touchy subject at the moment. Um, next, I you know, is a trigger journal. Um, everyone has different triggers, but the majority of it is if you overexert yourself and if you get stressed. Um, everyone's going to have stressful days. Nothing you can do about that. Um, if you have children, you know, they go, you take on their stress because your mums and dads, that's just, you know, what you do, isn't it? Um, you will always be stressed, so you will always face flares. Um, if you keep a journal, at least you know if you eat certain foods, it might trigger your IBS. Um, if you do certain exercises, it might trigger your um, restless legs. Um, if you, you know, if you swim, it might trigger headaches. Um, if you do, you know, if you keep a journal, it will let you, you know, you can figure out the patterns. Um, especially if you do suffer with IBS quite a lot with your bowels. Um, foods is plays a huge part. I believe it also plays a huge part in fibro. Um, so if you keep an eye on your foods that you're eating, um, you know, you might be able to figure out certain pains that you're having, maybe in your stomach, um, maybe with incontinence, if you're drinking certain things. Um, if you keep a journal, it might lead you to places that you didn't know. So it's, it's worth, um, it was worth doing, definitely. Um, and keep, keep your doctor informed, always keep your doctor informed because you never know what, you know, what you might need them for in the future. Um, it's always worth doing physiotherapy, um, because they will teach you exercises to help your pain, but also, um, you know, for, for different types of pain as well. So, uh, physiotherapy is always a good route to do but so those are my sort of helpful hints um some you may find helpful others you might not but um i hope that you took something away from this um i always sort of seem to go a little bit off track which i don't mean to do <laughs> um i wanted to do a really quick um video for you today but i see it's about 15 minutes long so I'm sorry about that. <laughs>
But if you want me to talk about anything else, just uh, drop a little message on here and I will talk about it for you. Um, there's always I always seem to have a lot of things to say, but um, sometimes I waffle on about other things. I don't mean to do that. <laughs> there's so much to talk about. <laughs> But anyway, I hope you all have a lovely day. Keep safe. Um, and like I say, if you want me to talk about anything, I will do. So keep safe, everyone. And I hope you have a pain-free day. Take care. Bye-bye.